In this video I'm gonna show you how to add a brief period of invincibility to your player after he gets hurt. So let's go! Let's start off with a couple fixes. First select the health bar total and health bar current objects and change the anchor point from middle to top left. Doing this will help us make sure that the hearts stay in the exact same position even when you change the resolution or the ratio of the screen. The second thing that I want us to take care of is make a couple objects prefabs. So go into the prefabs folder and create a new folder called projectiles. The fireball that we created earlier is a projectile, so let's just drag it in. Alright, now let's create another folder and call it collectibles. I want to place the health collectible in here, so just find it in the hierarchy and drag it in this folder. If you have multiple health collectible objects in your scene, make sure to replace all of them with prefabs or just delete them like I did here. Now let's go back to the prefabs folder and create a new folder for the traps. And as you probably guessed, we'll take the saw object and drag it in this folder. Alright, we're done with the prefabs. Now let's move on to the next fix. I've seen a couple comments on recent videos of people saying that the fireballs are not visible and they are right. To solve that, open the fireball prefab and change the sorting layer to foreground. So these are all the fixes. Now we can finally start working on the iframes. The first step is to go into the layer menu and create two new layers. Player and enemy. When you're done, select the player object and put it on the player layer. And if you see this question, just press yes, change children. Great, now select the saw object, open the prefab and change its layer to enemy. Good, once that's done, select the player, open the health script and let's get to coding. We're gonna add a couple variables, so let's organize the script first so that it's easier to read and understand. We're gonna add a new header called health first, and you'll see what it does once you save the script and go back into Unity. You'll notice that above the starting health we now have the health text. And it might not seem very helpful now, but once you add more variables to this script it will make a big difference. Now let's go back to the health script and create a new header called iframes. The first thing we'll need to implement iframes is a private float variable that will show us for how long the player will be invulnerable. And because I want to be able to tweak this from Unity, let's serialize this field as well. Initially I called this variable invulnerability duration, but I think this is too long and verbose, so let's just reduce it to iframes duration. The next variable that we'll need is an integer called number of flashes that will show us how many times the player will flash red before turning back to its normal state. And the final variable that we'll need is a reference to the sprite renderer to change the color of a player when he is invulnerable. And just to demonstrate quickly how this will work, let's go back into Unity and select the player object. Underneath the sprite renderer you see that we have a color field. And we can change this from code to make the player flash red and go back to its normal state, let's say, three times. To achieve this, first of all we need to grab a reference for the sprite renderer component, which we can do by using the getComponent method. Now let's scroll down to the bottom of the script and create a new private i enumerator. If the keyword is not highlighted, you can press Alt Enter and see the suggestions. In this case, we just need to make sure that we're using system.collections and the problem will be solved. Now let's call it invulnerability and make sure that the player uses it when he gets hurt. Now, an important detail here. You cannot call an i enumerator like you would a simple method. It wouldn't do anything in that case. But if we use start coroutine, it will work properly, so this is what we'll do. Inside the physics2d library, there is a method called ignore layer collision. And that's exactly what we'll use to make the player completely ignore collisions with all the enemy objects. For this to work properly, we need the player to be on layer 10 and the enemies on layer 11. Now let's go back into the code and type in 10, 11 as the first and second arguments. And the final argument will be true, which means that the collisions will be ignored. After that, we need to wait for a certain amount of time for which the player will be invulnerable and turn the collisions back on. And to do that, we'll use the same exact function, but only change the final argument to false. Good, now let's take care of what happens in between. So I'm gonna use a for loop to create a cycle. And here's a little trick for you. You can just type in for, then press the tab key twice and it will autocomplete everything for you. First of all, we need to change the number of loops from length to number of flashes, the variable that we created earlier. 
And at the beginning of a loop we want to take the sprite and change its color to red, which has the code 100. As you can see we can access the sprite renderer and then change its color property. Then I'm gonna assign it a new color and use 100 as parameters because that's the code for red. And the fourth parameter will be 0.5 because we want to make the image slightly transparent when it flashes red. To explain where all these numbers are coming from let's go back into Unity and press on the color field. Let's set the color to completely red and change the scale to RGB01. So let's set the parameters to 100 and 0.5 and you'll see how the player will look when he will flash red. After a certain period of time we want the player to go back to his normal color, which was white, with 100% opacity. So our next step is to make the code wait for a bit. And that's the cool part about IE enumerators. We can use a yield return new wait for seconds to make the code wait before executing the next line. So for now let's just wait one second before changing the color of the sprite back to white. You'll see that this time I didn't create a new color like before, but I used the predefined color, which is color.white. And Unity actually has a bunch of predefined colors which you can use. So I would recommend creating a new color only when you cannot find the color that you need, or when you want to tweak some parameter manually, like we did with the opacity. And the final step here is to make the code wait for one more second. Okay, this looks good enough to be tested, let's go back into Unity. And just for now I'm gonna set the iframes duration to 2 seconds and the number of flashes to 3. Ready? Now press play and hit the saw and see what happens. As expected the player is gonna turn red with a bit of transparency, then flash 3 times before going back to normal. But this doesn't look good and the invincibility period lasts much longer than 2 seconds actually, so let's fix that. So we know that we want the invincibility period to be equal to whatever we set in Unity. In my case, it's 2 seconds. So the first thing that I'll need here is the iframes duration, which I will divide by the number of flashes. And if you ask yourself why I did it like this, imagine that our invincibility lasts 2 seconds, but during this period of time we need to flash 3 times, which means that each flash will last about 0.66 seconds, which is 2 divided by 3. But during each flash we need to change the color twice, first it becomes red and then it goes goes back to white again, which means that we have two delays and the amount of time that we wait needs to be twice smaller. That's why I'm gonna multiply the number of flashes by two. Then use the exact same formula for the second delay, you can just copy paste it to save yourself some time. And that's it, you can go back into Unity and start playing around with the values and tweaking it to your liking. First I tried the duration of 2 seconds, but it seemed like the player was invulnerable for too long, so I took it down to 1 second, but you can play around with it and see what works best for your game. Thanks a lot for watching the video. This one is really special to me because we get the chance to shout out our first Patreon supporter. Thanks for making this happen, Bo Gray. You're awesome. And if you also want to get access to these videos one day earlier and see your name on this list, consider supporting me on Patreon. That would help a lot. That's it. See you in the next video.